I rare I almost never say someone says what do you do I rarely say I'm a poet because it sort of sounds pretentious and uh, often will lead to people reciting a Shel Silverstein poem which is fine which I love but it, I usually say I'm a teacher and I think they probably they've heard me say that they would probably say our, our dad's a teacher interestingly enough even as we speak the uh, the youngest or the oldest Sydney is doing the ELA, the big statewide ELA test at school. So we spent a lot of yesterday uh, getting him ready for this and talking about writing. And I ended up talking with him about a lot of the things I teach when I teach English 9 at Drew about how to outline, how to take notes, how to uh, how to begin and wrap up, a, a, you know, an essay, effectively a sort of fourth grade version of an essay. When I recently had the good fortune to win the Guggenheim, you know, they overheard my wife and I celebrating this, uh, and you know they they kept asking that it had something to do with that big museum that they'd gone on field trips to, you know, the Guggenheim Museum on Fifth Avenue. So, so, so I needed to explain that sort in a way, yes, yeah, sort of. But they thought that I was going to kind of go get a trophy over at the at the cool museum. What drew me to poetry in the first place was the sense that there was the world as you experience it, the world of your family, the world of of your work, of, of your everyday life, and that there's, there's a kind of, there's something under the surface going on too inside everybody and that kind of unknowable quality to other people, including your parents and your siblings, and that everyone has a whole inner life that you, it's very, very difficult to know about it and know what is happening inside another human being. And that's what I'm most interested in, and I think I'm drawn to those kind of moments of crisis in a way, because that's when the underbelly shows through. Those are the moments when you can see it. Matinee. After the biopsy, after the bone scan, after the consult and the crying, for a few hours no one could find them, not even my sister, because it turns out they'd gone to the movies. Something tragic was playing, something epic. And so they went to the comedy with their popcorn and their Cokes. The old wife whispering everything twice. The old husband cupping a palm to his ear as the late sun lit up an orchard behind the strip mall and they sat in the dark holding hands. <laughs>